let's do a little bit of probability with playing cards. And for the sake of this video, we're going to assume that our deck has no jokers in it. You could do the same problems with the joker. You'll just get slightly different numbers. So with that out of the way, let's first just think about how many cards we have in a standard playing deck. So you have four suits. So you have four suits. And the suits are the spades, the diamonds, the clubs, and the hearts. You have four suits. And then in each of those suits, you have 13 different types of cards, or sometimes it's called the rank. So each, each suit has 13 types of cards, types of cards. You have the ace. Then you have the two, the three, the four, the five, the six, seven, eight. 9, 10, and then you have the jack, the king, and the queen. And that is 13 cards. So you can have, uh, for each suit, you can have any of these. For any of these, you can have any of the suits. So you could have a jack of diamonds, a jack of clubs, a jack of spades, or a jack of hearts. So if you just multiply these two things, you could take a deck of playing cards and actually count them, take out the jokers, and count them. But if you just multiply this, you have four suits. Each of those suits have 13 types. So you're going to have 4 times 13 cards, or you're going to have 52 cards in a standard playing deck. Another way you could have said it, you're like, look, there's 13 of these ranks or types, and each of those come in four different suits. 13 times 4, once again, you would have gotten 52 cards. Now with that out of the way, let's think about the probabilities of different events. So let's say I shuffle that deck. I shuffle it really, really well. And then I randomly pick a card from that deck. And I want to think about what is the probability that I pick, what is the probability that I pick a jack? Well, how many equally likely events are there? Well, I could pick any one of those 52 cards. So there's 52 possibilities for when I pick that card. And how many of those 52 possibilities are jacks? Well, you have the jack of spades, the jack of diamonds, the jack of, cl of clubs, and the jack of hearts. There's four jacks. There's four jacks in that deck. So it is 4 over 52. These are both divisible by 4. 4 divided by 4 is 1. 52 divided by 4 is 13. Now let's think about now let's think about the probability. So I'll, I'll you know we're going to start over. I'm going to put that jack back in. I'm going to reshuffle the deck. So once again, I still have 52 cards. So what's the probability that I get a hearts? What's the probability that I just randomly pick a card from a shuffle deck and it is a hearts? Its suit is a heart. Well, once again, there's 52 possible cards I could pick from, 52 possible equally likely events that we're dealing with. And how many of those have our hearts? Well, essentially 13 of them are hearts. For each of those suit, you have 13 types. So there are 13 hearts in that deck. There are 13 diamonds in that deck. There are 13 spades in that deck. There are 13 clubs in that deck. So 13 of the 52 would result in hearts. And, bo and both of these are divisible by 13. This is the same thing as 1 fourth. 1 in 4 times, I will pick it out, or I have a 1 in 4 probability of getting a hearts when I go to that, when I randomly pick a card from that shuffle deck. Now let's do something that's a little bit more interesting, or maybe it's a little obvious. What's the probability that I pick something that is a jack? I'll just write J. It's a jack and. And it is a hearts. It is a jack, and it is a hearts. Well, if you're reasonably familiar with cards, you'll know that there's actually only one card that is both a jack and a heart. It is literally the jack of hearts. So we're saying, what is the probability that we pick the exact card, the jack of hearts? Well, there's only one one event, one card that that meets these that meets this criteria right over here, and there's 52 possible cards. So there's a one in 52 chance that I pick the jack of hearts, something that is both a jack and it's a heart. Now let's do something a little bit more interesting. What is the probability? You might want to pause this and think about this a little bit before I give you the answer. What is the probability of, so I, once again, I have a deck of 52 cards. I shuffle it, randomly pick a card from that deck. What is the probability that that card that I pick from that deck is a jack or, or a heart? So it could be the jack of hearts, or it could be the jack of diamonds, or it could be the jack of spades, or it could be the queen of hearts, or it could be the two of hearts. So what is the probability of this? And this is a little bit more of an interesting thing, because it's, we, know, we know, first of all, that there are 52 possibilities. There are 52 possibilities. But how many of those possibilities meet the criteria, meet, meet these conditions that it is a jack or a heart? And to understand that, I'll draw a Venn diagram. 
Sounds kind of fancy, but nothing fancy here. So imagine that this rectangle I'm drawing here represents all of the outcomes. So if you want, you can imagine it has an area of 52. So this is 52, 52 possible outcomes. Now how many of those outcomes result in a jack? So we already learned this. One out of 13 of those outcomes result, re result in a jack. So I could draw a little circle here where that area, and I'm approximating, that represents the probability of a jack. So it should be roughly 1 13th, or 4 52nds, of this area right over here. So I'll just draw it like this. So this right over here is the probability of a jack. The probability, the probability of the jack. It is 4. It, it is, there's 4 possible cards out of the 52. So that is 4 52nds, or 1 out of, or 1 out of 13. 1 13. Now what's the probability of getting a heart? Well, I'll draw another little circle here that represents that. 13 out of 52. 13 out of these 52 cards represent a heart. And actually, one of them represents both a heart and a jack. So let me. So I'm actually going to overlap them. And hopefully, this will make sense in a second. So there's actually 13 cards that are a heart. So this is the number of hearts. Number of number of hearts. And actually, let me write this top thing that way as well. That makes it a little bit clearer that we're actually looking at. So let me clear that. So the number, number of jacks. Number of jacks. And of course, this overlap right here is the number of jacks and hearts, the number of items out of this 52 that are both a jack and a heart. It is in both sets here. It is in this green circle, and it is in this orange circle. So this right over here, let me do that in yellow, since I did that problem in yellow. This right over here is the number of jacks and hearts. So let me draw a little arrow there. It's getting a little cluttered. Maybe I should have drawn a little bit bigger. Number of jacks and, and hearts. Number of jacks and hearts. And that's an overlap over there. So what is the probability of getting a jack or a heart? So if you think about it, the, prob the probability is going to be the number of events that meet this, these conditions over the total number of events. We already know the total number of events are 52. But how many meet these conditions? So it's going to be the number, it's going to be, you could say, well, look, the green circle right there says the number that gives us a jack. And the orange circle tells us that the number that gives us a heart. So you might want to say, well, why don't we add up the or why don't we add up the green and the orange? But if you did that, you would be double counting, because if you add it up, if you just did four, if you did four plus thirteen, what are we saying? We're saying that there are four. We're saying that there are four jacks, and we're saying that there are. We are saying that there are thirteen hearts. But in both of these, we're in both. When we do it this way, in both cases, we are counting the jack of hearts. We're putting the jack of hearts here, and we're putting the jack of hearts here. So we're counting the jack of hearts twice, even though there's only one card there. So you would have to subtract out where they're common. You would have to subtract out the 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 the, the item that is both a jack and a heart. So you would subtract out a one. Another way to think about it is, you really want to figure out the total area here. You want to figure out the total area here. You want to figure out this total area. And let me zoom in. And I'll generalize it a little bit. So if you have one circle like that, and then you have another overlapping circle like that, and you wanted to figure out the total area of both of the circles combined, you would look at the area of this circle. You would, you would look at the area of this circle. And then you could add it to the area of this circle. But when you do that, you'll see that when you add the two areas, you're counting this area twice. So in order to only count that area once, you have to subtract that area from the sum. So if this area, if this is, if this area has a, this area is b, and the intersection where they overlap is c, is c. There, the combined area is going to be a plus b minus where they overlap minus c. So that's the same thing over here. We're counting all the jacks. And that includes the jack of hearts. We're counting all the hearts, and that includes the jack of hearts. So we counted the jack of hearts twice, so we have to subtract 1 out of that. So it's going to be 4 plus 13 minus 1. Or this is going to be, this is going to be 16 50 seconds. And both of these things are divisible. Both of these things are divisible by 4. So this is going to be the same thing as if you divide 16 by 4, you get 4. 52 divided by 4 is 13. So this is there's a 4 
thirteenth chance that you get a jack or a heart.